Welcome to Between the Bytes, tech news and tech updates. I'm Gary Arnold. I am joined today by Derek Parkinson and a new special guest, Lee Weech, Director of Sales. Lee, how are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We wanted to bring Lee in today to talk about kind of a different topic. We wanted to talk about, I guess, common IT issues that businesses face and talk a little bit about what an IT network assessment is or network audit here a lot here termed a lot of different ways but Lee will hopefully later to, later in the po- in the podcast walk us through you know why you would want that what you would get out of it and hopefully the action items action steps you could take uh, after getting an IT assessment so that's where we're headed let's jump in Lee you've been at Executech now for four and a half almost five years coming up in a little bit so you've been around the block and so I'm excited to have your perspective on these things I want to start and ask you, if you're a business, if you're a company, uh, an organization, you know, an SMB, how do you know if your IT is working the way that it should? Great question, Gary. A lot of companies that we run into that we work with currently that are making this switch, they put a lot of that responsibility on their MSP or their IT manager in-house. And a lot of the decision makers don't really have an idea of what's going on. So it's one of the things that I would definitely coach people to do is to at least have some working knowledge of what's going on in their IT space. So when red flags start to come up or terminologies you're hearing doesn't jive with what you know, that's when it's maybe time to reach out to do an assessment. Yeah, that's a great point. What would you say are two or three metrics that a, a business owner or or you know CEO, whatever, should pay attention to when it comes to IT? You know, there's a lot of things where the flags start to raise for these decision makers in businesses. Uh, The most common one and the easiest one to set off, you know, the hair on the back of the neck is just the work's not getting done. You're asking for something, you need something to be accomplished, and it keeps getting put off. You know, oh, we'll get to it next week. We'll get to it in two weeks. And all of a sudden, a month has gone by and nothing's been done. So that should immediately raise a red flag for they don't have the scope of work done correctly. They don't have the talent to actually accomplish what they're looking to do. They're kind of buying time to learn what they want you to do because they're not responding quick enough. That's the fastest one that is easier to see. And then the other one, it kind of parlays into a, a few different aspects, but as the business owner, the decision maker, or anybody inside the organization, They start to lose trust. They start to lose that feel that if I go to Bob, the IT guy, he's going to get it done immediately and it's going to be done correctly. And then the third one, of course, if you happen to walk by the desk where the person sits and you just don't see him working all that much and you don't know what they're actually doing, then it's a good time to come in and have another set of eyes look at the environment take a look at what's going on and just give you an assessment of what it looks like and improvements that can be made. That's great. And I think you covered kind of another question I was going to ask, which, which, what are the red flags? And I think you've detailed them there that it's stuff's not getting done. I think that's the big number one worry that we see, regardless of how your IT is set up. If stuff is not getting done, there's a problem. Are there other red flags and are there red flags that are more common with our audience and people will have a variety of IT setups, whether they've got an in-house individual, a team, maybe they used an outsource provider, maybe they don't really have anybody and they just sort of figure it out. In those scenarios, is there a more common red flag for in-house teams versus using an outsource provider? Yeah, for in-house teams, it's usually they have to do some research to get the work done. So, you know, you decide to, to move to Microsoft Azure, for example, and you put a timeline of six weeks to get it done. And all of a sudden it's eight weeks and they haven't started. Usually in-house IT people, they kind of know what they know and they're great at what they know, what the environment is in your particular business. But they kind of get sometimes a little lost in the newer things that are happening outside of the building and you know, one of the things at Executech is we have a home training department and the vendors will actually train us as an organization to kind of stay in front of the wave, that learning curve wave that's occurring. So I would just look to make sure that your in-house people know what they're doing and they're not studying on your dime to get it done. 
so what I'm hearing is a big red flag that can also be a catalyst again for a network assessment is change. If, if there's change going, if there's something new, if you want to do some sort of upgrade, there might be a skill or knowledge gap. Uh, there might be a resource gap. You know, it might be too much for one guy to handle. Yeah, absolutely. One of our newer clients here at Executech, they have a full-time IT person, but they have an education gap, a skill level gap of a couple of projects and a couple ongoing things that they need. So we're coming in and being what we call backstop support for them. So they're keeping their full-time IT person, but they're allocating five to eight hours a week into these other little items that we have the skill set for that the in-house person doesn't. I think we've covered a lot of the the why you may want to look at an IT assessment or some of the whys of just common IT problems. Is there anything to, to be considered when it comes to when or how to go about getting that IT assessment? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, the how and who and when are, are always challenging for businesses, you know, especially in today's day and age. There's a lot of managed service providers out there that can do it. it. It seems like you can do a quick Google search and find 50 if you wanted, but who has the actual skill set to do it? Who has the actual talent? Who has the working knowledge and the history of working in the industry that you are particularly in? So I would reach out to different businesses, whether you belong to a chamber or a business professional group, maybe reach out to some of those individuals to get some references do some research on who to actually select to do it. When, I would say when the red flags start to go up, when the hair on the back of your neck starts to stand up, and when, as previously mentioned, when things are starting to not get done, maybe it's time to reach out to somebody else just to get an extra set of eyes on the situation. There's a lot of MSPs that you can just pay them for the time it takes to do the assessment, and they'll kind of give you a roadmap, which we'll probably talk about here in a second, that just to give you some improvement points, some threats, some things that they actually see that can improve your overall network. Excellent. So yeah, let's let's take the next step and talk about you're a business owner, there's red flags, I need the assessment. What does that look like? What does an assessment typically look like? Yeah, there's different levels of assessment. So it's really how deep and the depth that you want us to get as your managed service provider. Uh, on the surface level, there's a lot of things that we can do to provide some information for you without getting too deep. If you want to go a deeper dive, which we would recommend doing, is we kind of need what we call the keys of the kingdom, overall passwords to the network. And then we can put some software in that will kind of get some really good information of what's going on. It's going to give you all types of information, age of your devices, what devices need to be switched out, if you have any compliance needs that you have to adhere to, let you know which ones do not fall under your compliance. Um, if you're securing or storing any data that should not be there, it needs to sit in an encrypted state as opposed to just on a file, on an Excel file in a folder. It's going to find those, it's going to flag those, and it's going to be in this uh, report that we can provide to you to let you know where you're really falling short and where those kind of weaknesses and those vulnerabilities are for the overall network. It sounds like we can be as thorough, we'd like to be as thorough as possible, but we can also be as thorough as someone is comfortable with. If you just need a high level, don't like, as you said, hand over the keys, which, you know, I reckon we all recognize that can be a little maybe nerve wracking handing that over despite, you know, reputation or whatever. There's still the, uh, enough information that can be gleaned at a high level to get some, some sort of action items. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. You know, we'll come in for usually it's about 45 minutes to an hour and it's, and it's a conversation. We're really just discussing with the people in the room what you see, what your challenges are, where's the fires, the good, the bad, the ugly kind of type situation is kind of what we're just discussing with you. And then uh, when we do the assessments here at Executech, one of the sales team members will be there. And then one of the lead technicians, one of our senior technicians will be there as well to deal with the technical pieces of this. And then once we conclude, the technical resource will put together what we call a SWOT analysis for you. It's a one page document, sometimes longer, depending on how much information we have, but it's broken up into four pieces. So the first one is the strengths, obviously the, the great things that we see that you're overall doing weaknesses, just some places that we think you can improve on, 
smaller little improvements. Opportunities, these are kind of bigger opportunities for you. Again, maybe you have some compliance needs that need to be taken care of and, and those opportunities to close those holes. And then the threats, and I would highly suggest paying attention to the threats on, on those. That's where the hackers are gonna be able to come in. That's where your overall threats are to your organization to lose data and, and be in a, a quite bad situation. But the biggest thing during that, and, and this is something that I say to everybody that I talk to, whether they're our client or another client, it really comes down to trust. You know, sitting on the other side of the table, being the decision makers, the people in the business, look at who you're dealing with, look at the assessment people that are doing the work and just have that gut feel. Do I trust these people? Do I trust that these individuals, when the fire starts, are they going to come and put it out? And if they need two people, can they bring two people? If I need 10 people, can they bring 10 people to put out this fire for our business so we can be operational on Monday morning? So that's one of the biggest things I would advise and kind of coach people looking for a managed service provider is build that level of trust. Great thoughts. Real quick, a, a small question on that. It, on the client side, who would you recommend being in the room, bringing to the meeting that will be most relevant? Yeah, so usually in the room, we'll have the owner, a CFO, a COO type individual in the room. And then there's usually one or two people who are more hands-on techie. Uh, they don't really have the education to be a full tech, but you know they have their gotten their hands dirty through the years doing some tech stuff. So that's where they get that trust factor because they know enough information to know whether or not the assessment are kind of pulling the wool over their eyes or whether they're being truthful with what's going on. But I've seen it anywhere from one individual being uh, at the assessment to 10 people in an assessment. And it was just a rapid fire question and answer type situation. So anything's okay. possible. Awesome. So the SWOT analysis, it sounds like is kind of the big takeaway, the big value that you'll get out of an assessment is you'll get this third party view of what your network, what's really going on in the, your network and at your company technology wise. What, you know, Lee, you've been on dozens, if not hundreds of these you know, over the years with clients, prospects across the board, what are the common themes that you see? You know, what are the frequent red flags in a network, the weaknesses and maybe the threats that the businesses should be paying attention to? Yeah. One of the really easy ones that, you know, in today's day and age, we're always surprised people don't do this more frequently is just password change policies. Every 60 days, every 45 days, complexity, using a phrase as opposed to the password, those kind of type situations. We're really surprised that those don't happen. Some of the other red flags is something that we coach our clients all the time is from an offboarding perspective. A lot of people are really good on the onboarding side of setting up the IT world and all the things that they need. But from an offboarding perspective, there needs to be a policy in place to do the offboarding. So if somebody has keys to the financial kingdom of the organization, that individual is currently sitting, getting released of their duties while the IT person is locking them out of all of the different forms and 365 or whatever they're using, Google Drive, whatever that happens to be. So they can't just go outside to their car outside the building and start downloading information or deleting information uh, when that takes place. We had a client fire somebody and as they're being fired, they said they forgot a pen and paper to take notes, went back to their office and deleted $100,000 of accounts receivable and gone, gone, never to be returned. So those type situations unfortunately occur. So make sure that there's policies in place to do that. Two others that come to mind is we'll look at the firewall and make sure the firewall is up to date with their licensing. If the firewall is not up to date with the licensing, it's just a throughput for the data going in and out of the building. So make sure the license is up to date. And then we'll really dive into any compliance needs, whether you're city, municipality, finance, SOC compliance, all of the hundred of them that are really out there. We'll ask you questions about the compliance because at Executech, we're dealing with so many different verticals, so many different clients that we have a lot of experience dealing with the different compliance needs of our clients. 
Back to the deleting of files and information. I'm sure there's plenty of business owners out there that think, you know, I don't have any employees that would get that petty or negative if they were being let go. I've run into situations where someone is let go and in their mind, any processes that they've created, any spreadsheets that they've built that's used inside the company, they created it so it's theirs and that's the kind of stuff that gets deleted. It might not hit your bottom line immediately, but it sets you back quite a bit with that stuff because they created it for your organization while they were employed. So that is actually that organization's property. But in a lot of the minds of people who are let go, they were the ones who took the reins and built it out. So they get to delete it when they leave. So being able to lock people out quickly and efficiently and completely is a major help for these kinds of things. So again, Lee, great information. And, you know, it sounds like it might be a fun podcast to get you and maybe one of our uh, senior IT guys to trade some war stories. I know there's been some crazy things that we've come across uh, over the years in server rooms and at clients that just they didn't know. But once you find out, it's a little scary that this is how you were running the whole time. Maybe that can be a podcast for another time. And yeah, reiterating what you said about passwords, a big theme that we've been pushing on here on the podcast and in our blogs is multi-factor authentication. Most everybody hates it. It's obnoxious. It's annoying. But we'll put a plug for it here. Enabling multi-factor authentication across all of your accounts is a huge step in securing your company, securing your data. So if you don't have it, put it in and we won't have to add it to our SWOT analysis when we do an assessment for you. It'll be a strength instead of on the opportunities or threats box. Yeah. And the advice I would give is the communication to turn on multi-factor authentication comes from the very top of the organization. It doesn't come from the IT manager or your managed service provider. It comes from the top person, the CEO, CFO, COO is sending that email of what to do. And yeah, it, it's a little burdensome sometimes. And sometimes you have to multi-factor right before you do a podcast or you do a Teams or a Zooms meeting. And it's just, the timing is just horrible. But the benefit you get of having it definitely outweighs the negative side of things. And especially not only multi-factor authentication, but email verification, email spam filters, and a lot of horror stories we can go through on that next version of this podcast. Yeah, love it. Lee, again, thank you so much. Great information. As we wrap up and kind of close this up here, are there any, is there any last parting advice or thoughts that you would share to business owners about IT, their network, business operations in general? Yeah, I said it near the beginning, but I would definitely advise whoever's the point of contact for your IT doesn't need to be the expert at IT, doesn't need to how to get into a server or get into a firewall, but spend a little bit of time educating yourself on what those things are, what they do, at least have some working knowledge of what the IT environment is. Ask the questions to the people doing your IT, just get engrossed in what's going on. So when the conversation starts to go different paths, those red flags start to go up and have people that you trust, have somebody maybe outside of the organization that you can bounce some ideas off of to really know when it's time to take a hard look at your IT situation and get that assessment from a a third party. Fantastic. Great advice. And there are lots of resources to get that high level of understanding, including, shameless plug, executech.com and this podcast. (laughs) Lee, uh, thank you so much. It was great to have you on the podcast. Uh, Super good information and we appreciate you coming out. No problem. Anytime. Willing to help out. That's it for this week's episode. Thank you for listening and we will catch you next time. Thank you. See you guys later.